come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> General <Relax. laughs> listener, hairless Sorry. ape, whoever you are, thank you for joining us for the 200. And seventy sixth episode. Seriously, you, you know of you the know? Saturday Night Freak Show. I did. I looked it up <gasps> Yay, before wow. I came down here. Good job, man. Thank Guys, you. We're getting <laughs> close to three hundred. I know it's exciting. Don't we'll forget. That's why we're keeping track. Oh, God, we'll forget yeah, next we week. We got one hundred. We'll Should we do the movie three hundred on our three hundredth episode? Oh. <laughs> 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 would that oh be really God, disappointing all. for that all of our listeners? Yeah. <laughs> that would be the worst. If you want to hear us talk about 300 on our 300th episode, don't, why don't you don't, uh, right. write in? Don't, I don't want to hear Well, him. let's tell them how Sean they can get a hold of us. You uh, can uh, follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly at Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram. So... Who are, this is the question that you're probably asking yourself right mm, now, mm-hmm. these internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. We get stopped on the street every day. We can't walk anywhere without someone going like, you're the. It's a problem. Yeah. yeah. You're problem. yeah. I got to wear that Brando get up, you know, yeah. to go out in public, you know, I got to have the. Sometimes I get mistaken for Holly. <laughs> it's often. true. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you know how often One Holly gets fan mail beard. for me? That's all it's not going to be me. It's One of us needs my to trademark. Shave. It's my trademark. Right. Sorry. You can't keep doing this. Sorry. Well, we are a movie review podcast, uh, usually. And tonight we watched. <laughs> Typically. A movie. <laughs> have we done something else? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, talking about uh, uh, hygiene now. Uh, <laughs> hygiene tips from the Saturday Night Freak Show crew. So sure. tonight we watched Peak Freak Show movie chosen by Holly. Me. What we watched tonight? Tonight we watched The Island of Dr. Moreau. This is like a phantom Moreau. phantom freak show pick that's been floating around it's, probably for yeah. about 276 episodes. I've been name checking so. this movie since I joined full time. So yeah. I'm pretty sure sh- yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. About it. But why is that? Because it's legendary. Like, the making of is legendary. Well, it seems like, I mean, it. uh, when I said peak freak show, I'm not joking. I mean, I Mm -hmm. think it's a freak show movie. It is. By, like, every sense of the uh, definition of the word. What year was this made? 1996. And who made it? Oh, Colin, that's a question. (laughs) (laughs) A question a documentary had to answer. What's that documentary called? Uh, Lost Souls, The Doomed Journey of Richard Stanley's The Island of Dr. Moreau. (laughs) Woo! Yeah. That took a hot minute. You remembered it, though. <laughs> I that know. Was I didn't even have to look at my phone. I know. I'm, I'm so like, I know it's called Lost Soul, but you took the cake. They <laughs> yeah. subtitled everything. Got it. That's, even that's a horrible title. <laughs> yeah. Lost but Richard Soul. Richard Stanley did not, was not credited on this Richard film. Richard Stanley Except was for, not uh, screenplay. Credited. Yeah. Well, Fired after four days. Yeah. Yeah. Richard Stanley wrote the original screenplay, Dick and Stanley. he was hired on to direct this film. <laughs> And Use your powers. things things did not go his way, and ultimately, um, John Frankenheimer is the credited director of this movie. John Frankenheimer. What a great last name! I, I say, like, I would love to be a Frankenheimer. That's a uh, great last name. That is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Franken Frankenheimer. Frank- <laughs> like it, he sounds. It sounds like a made up name for this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it sounds like a, a fake name, name for this movie. Frankenheimer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a Simpsons made up name, yeah. right? It does. <laughs> well, that's why I'm like, you can't get like two styles, I think, or two filmmakers so diametrically opposed as Richard oh, Stanley and John Frankenheimer. Oh, Frankenheimer's a guy that you would know from, uh, well, recent, I suppose he's dead now, but uh, Ronan yeah. was one of Ronin his movies. Ronan, Prophecy, you the remember the, Candidate. The first yeah. one. Huh? The, the first, first one. one. Yeah, that's why one. he became, yeah. yeah. And Grand Prix, the movie with James Reindeer Garner. Reindeer Games, remember that one? What? Yeah. Reindeer Games? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Frankenheimer did rain. Oh, he did. Yeah. Holy he shit. Did. Yeah. Yeah. God, he used to hear I think that he did, name a lot more. He back might have done yeah. French Connection 2. He did. He I did. Think, yes. Yeah. Okay. You're Friedkin right did that. the first one. He did mm-hmm. the Frenchier Connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he directed a lot of fucking movies, but I mean, I think he was mostly known as, I don't know, not like an action director, but, you mm, know, like a drama of. action guy. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got to be like in his 60s or 70s when he was asked to do this movie. Was this his last 60s? movie? 60s. 
No, I'm looking, it wasn't his I'm last looking. movie. No. Did, did he get no. brought in because he was reliable? Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. There, no, he Reindeer was, Games. And, I was like, Reindeer Games was after this. Yeah, Reindeer yeah. Games is in 2000. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, that was 2000. Like he was he was yeah. known for being Ronan. a really fucking hard ass, and they're like, if anyone is gonna rein this movie in, it's probably gonna be this guy. And even he couldn't do it, huh? I mean, he did his <laughs> he did what he could. He was he was a dick. Like I'm not gonna say he was like a good dude, and like he did he did a good job, but I think he did the best he could. And because this movie, this movie is batshit crazy. But the making of it is even more batshit crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not really that different. Like, I think the lines between behind the scenes and the movie are very blurred. There's a lot of insurrection going on yeah. behind the scenes as well as on like screen. Like, that scene when Val Kilmer is sitting there and they're all, like, having an orgy and doing drugs. I'm like, that's really what was happening yeah. backstage. Mm-hmm. Like, that was real. Because like, you got a lot crazy. of extras who are, you know, it's super hot. They're all together. What is this, Hawaii? Australia. Australia. Australia? Mm-hmm. Okay. Prison Island of Australia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and at one point during the filming, Frankenheimer even was like, you know what, we need more extras. Let's just bring in and they brought in like the the craziest hippies they could find in Australia to be the extras on the People movie. that so were just, like living in the outback. Yeah. They're like for they're fun out here in the jungle. Let's just have them be on the movie. Like yeah. it was crazy. And then put them in dog face makeup yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. and uh, have them run around all sweaty in this stuff and yeah. try and orchestrate the madness. Well, Stanley had done uh, madness. That's a good behind the scenes title, mm-hmm. yeah, right? That's yeah. what the Mobile documentary Soul. should be called. That is yeah. what the documentary should be called. Orchestrating madness. Yeah. Well, Stanley was. Uh, I mean, he had directed two feature films that were like really indie movies. One of them was called Hardware, Hardware. which we did on this show. You should we go back did. and listen to that episode. Yeah. Like and greasy, dust gross, devil. which I have. Yeah. yeah. Do you? Uh huh. Yeah. Of but he that does. one, that one got does. mangled. That was like he went uh-huh. through the Weinstein's when they were Miramax, mm-hmm. and they recut the movie into took it away from him and all that stuff so he had a bad experience there but that mm-hmm. was filmed in South Africa and so I think this was his shot at like a major studio movie it was. what and was this, the budget on this thing oh it was um, I mean we gotta be like 40 million no it was it, w- like it was uh, it, yeah, 40 million exp- it looks yeah. expensive it was 40 million and it grossed well ultimately worldwide at 42 million but. Grossed forty two mm-hmm. on a forty million dollar budget. Yeah, that's not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. Well, word of mouth. I mean, I saw it on its original release, and Did I just you? remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last time I've seen it. Wow. Yeah, that was kind of one of those. Like, I saw it, and it, you know, when the first time you see it, mm-hmm. you know, it's like there's this movie coming out, and you're like, okay. yeah, and you go into it, and you're like, oh, this movie sucks. And then you just don't watch it again. And then in the interim, there's been this, you know, like Mm -hmm. interest in like, what the fuck were they thinking when they made the Island of Dr. Moreau? Yeah, yeah, no, this was a total passion project for Richard Stanley, which is makes it even more crazy. God, could you imagine getting fired from your passion project? Oh, my God. What a He got so depressed that he uh, stalked off into the jungle. He did. And just started living in the jungle. He did. With, I think, the hippies you were speaking of. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Yeah, New Line Line kicked him off the movie, and they were like, we're still going to pay you, but you got to go. So this guy was supposed to take him to the airport. He showed up. He wasn't there. They actually found him like six months later, and he was just living in the jungle. Yeah, just chilling. Well, did Stanley's he, a weird dude, yeah. though. I mean, that's the thing. You, you ever I seen mean, if you look, see him? what he looks like, it oh, makes yeah. sense. Like yeah. you're like, okay, yeah. I get it. He looks like a character in you know in Hardware, yeah. the guy with the black hat and trench yeah. coat. He is that character. He is that guy. He is the guy. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's, he seems really crazy. intelligent. You know, he's a uh, thoughtful, intelligent guy, but he's off. Yeah. Talks yeah. really fast. He's not stupid, but he's not. He's very passionate. He's not a people person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's Is a, he on the spectrum, he's maybe? A nat- he's like a nature guy. Like, he, he likes to commune with nature. Oh, dude, he's yeah. got, like, the strangest... Like, his mother was, like, a voodoo priestess in mm-hmm. South cool. Africa. And, yep. I yeah. I mean, this is his passion project. Yeah. Rumor has it that he uh, got the effects guys to... To dress him up as one of the, uh, he did when they when they as found one of the him, extras and hang out in the back of the him movie in the middle of the jungle. They like brought him back and they put him in makeup, put him in a mask, and he's in this movie. Mm, he's an extra in the, background. in the background. I saw it when we were watching. I was like, I think that's him. <laughs> there is a shit ton of extras like that. So oh, yeah, many I mean, if there's one thing this movie did right is like the the amount of people make sense for the scope of this movie. Yeah, like you can the see why number he of extras. In more yeah, people. like mm-hmm. it makes more sense that there's so many of mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. A yeah. colony of animal people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they said they detected that it was Richard Stanley because when it came time for lunch, he was the only guy who didn't take his yep. makeup off. Because <laughs> it's like a million degrees and he's the only one that's still keeping everything on. They're like, sure. why yeah. is yeah. that guy still wearing... Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I mean, but, you know, obviously a crew would only do that if they, you know, liked you. And I think that was the thing. I think the people who were hired on yeah. to do this movie originally liked Richard Stanley. If you watch the documentary by the end of it, most people that they're interviewing, they're like, this we would have loved to have seen how this movie would have turned out if he had done it because they all did like him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And apparently they speak highly of him. Like yeah, a... they do. They spoke really highly of him. So why'd they pull him off of it? Just based on what had happened so I think far, within four days, four days in? he like was like, just like 20 going... days behind or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, one of those deals. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess with the elements you're working with, you have, uh, what's his name? Um, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando, oh, which Jesus. is... It's a lot of people that are hard his, to wrangle. In his yeah. life and career is mm-hmm. hard to wrangle. Uh, Val Kilmer, who is notoriously hard to wrangle. Mm-hmm. And especially on this side. And he Val Kilmer had bad. his heart broken in m- more ways than, than you can imagine working on this movie. Not yeah. only did he find out uh, by watching the news while he was on set that he was getting divorced, uh. but he like it was his dream to work with Brando. And then he got on set with him and Brando was like, fuck y'all, fuck this, fuck everything. And, and he was, was like, Brando. wow, this is... This is like never meet your heroes, and my wife is leaving me. It's like what he was experiencing all at once. Yeah. So well, he's, he's like, also, I'm not coming out of my trailer. Yeah, he yep. has like a very diva ish reputation. And mm-hmm. Stanley said, yeah. I, I mean, think he was like, the best Batman. Let's just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was before this, right? Yeah, it was. was it was yeah. the year before. Oh, that's okay. why. If you're, that's, if you're Batman, yeah. they refused to let him out of his contract because Batman was such a hit that they were uh, like, we so are not letting a, you out of this. Was this an agent like set this up for him? Yep. And, he didn't and then he got. The, and he, at first he was like Brando fuck yeah and then he actually g- like got into it and mm. was like oh, I don't want to do this and yeah. an agent was like you're in a contract and Deal Stanley I think was kind of up against the wall because New Line Cinema this is Bob Shea back in the, in the day yeah. uh-huh. was like basically like the reason we got money to make this movie is because of Brando and because mm-hmm. of Kilmer so you're keeping these guys well, even that, though you don't want them necessarily not necessarily the original cast was Bruce Willis and James Woods I watched Marlon that. Brando, but instead of uh, Val Kilmer and David Tilly, it was Bruce Willis and James Woods. But at some point, I, it seems to me like Rob Morrow, right from TV's Northern Exposure and whatever the hell he's doing now. And but wasn't Thulis he? Role? The, yeah, yeah, because Thulis didn't get brought in until. He seems so that miscast. Was th- well, he, Thulis, in, right? was, Thulis was mm-hmm. with Frankenheimer. He, I yeah. think he was the guy that Frankenheimer, Frankenheimer recast him. because Morrow. Had a scheduling issue or some or somehow was able to get out of his contract. Yeah, where the, everybody else was like, "I want out of here," and they're like, "Oh right, yeah, yeah. he walked. He, yeah. yeah, he did." It's, it's so insane how much things change because it was Bruce Willis in the um, David Thewlis role, and Val Kilmer um, came in and he took over that role. But then at some point he wanted to do David Thewlis' role, so they switched. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was kind of wondering. It's hard to keep track of it's all the so shit this movie. It's so insane. I can't even. It's so insane. But I was wondering why Val Kilmer, who was a you know big star at the time that this mm-hmm. movie would made, was made, would do like a second fiddle. I mean, he's he like the third to. guy in the mm-hmm. cast. Yeah, he can't. He was coming off of Heat and Batman after this. And the like, doors, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely yeah. yeah. He he wanted to because he would have been he would have spent less time on the set that way. So that's, what, yeah, that's well, why. And Brando was the magic word for a lot of people involved. Mm-hmm. Once a lot of people found out Brando were involved, they were like, sure, sign me up. You know, mm-hmm. Fergus Balk said the same thing. Ron Perlman said the same thing. Yeah. A lot of people, that was their reason for yeah. signing and on. Obviously, because yeah. who wouldn't? But it's know? just, it's weird to watch. I mean, when you're watching the movie now, it is like, those two guys, uh, Brando and Kilmer, are in a different movie than the mo- than everybody else in the movie, yes, and they, they are. are actively working to sabotage every scene that they are in. Yes. I mean, like, I've never seen, because you figure, you know, these guys are getting paid, you know, millions of dollars probably, right, by a studio. Granted, they're, you know, how many hundred miles away from the place. So it's yeah. like, we're out here and we can do whatever the fuck we want. Yep. But it's like, this is going on the screen and will be part of your legacy. Do you not care at all? I mean, Brando clearly did not. Nope. No, no. no. There care. was food on set. He was happy. Yeah. He just, well, and his little buddy, the. Oh, this, this oh. the world's smallest man? Yes. That, oh, yeah. That in and of itself. Is just the only reason that person is in the movie is because Brando said, I want this guy to be yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> the why. only that's reason. A, that's a choice I agree with Brando on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like the mini me. Yep. Uh, Brando's wanna, mini me. I might want to mm-hmm. stick with Brando's version of this movie and just watch <laughs> that thing. Yeah. I agree. I'm with Brando <laughs> on yeah, this. No. Where did mini where define mini me? Was Dominican he, Republic. Like, <laughs> but he was, he was supposed to be. 
And Brando saw him. I can't. Saw remember. I saw TV. the documentary, but I can't and remember how this. They saw him out. on TV, and they're like, "We need him in this movie." Mm-hmm. So they went to find him, and he's like a huge celebrity in the Dominican Republic. So they brought him on, mm-hmm. and Brando was just obsessed with him. Actually, his part was very small. He was just supposed to be like a background character, and um, the 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 other. Uh, the other son that was very articulate mm-hmm. that like he just kept they kept showing him and we didn't was really that know Mark Dacascos from no uh, that was um Mar- uh, Marcio Nuffenheim what was it? it's a German last name I forgot mm. what it is it's um but he his part was actually very very big um I just had uh, an apostrophe as Marco Hoffschneider an apostrophe. <laughs> 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 Is this why we get a Dr. Evil mini me yes, piano? Yes, it is. Is this, this why is that it. scene happens in that movie? Is because of this movie? Dr. Evil and mini me is because of this movie. Holy yeah. fuck. That's, All what, right. that's what that's making wow. fun of. Yes. Yeah. I, wow. I know. The world is collapsing on itself. <laughs> this is the reason we got mini me. It all makes sense now. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I know. That's amazing. I know. <laughs> Woo. Because it's as ridiculous in this movie as it is in it Austin is. Powers. It yes. is. It is almost the same. Yeah. Yes. Holy it's shit. It's wonderful. Like, it's not even a parody. It's just a straight-up copy because it's, it's just like, as yeah, ridiculous. It's the same camera yeah. shot. Yeah. 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 It's one. Oh, wow. It's, it's amazing. Holy shit. All the, uh, the white makeup on Brando, too, was because he wanted his double to do most of the shots and not him. Yeah. So he just he could, shoved yeah. that shit on his face as sure. a way to, mm-hmm. to do less work. Well, Brando did anything he could do to be on screen less in this movie. Yeah. And just, if, I mean, like, because all the scenes he's in, I'm like, does he actually... It, are these scripted lines, or is Some he just like them. coming up with this shit? As to- we could see at one point in the movie, you can see his earpiece. His assistant was in his trailer reading him the lines, and he's repeating yep. what she's saying. Why and that's why he has those weird pauses. Considered yep. one of the greatest actors of all I time. Think he used to be. I have no. no because but, he used to be. But even back in the day, he was famous for having like strips of paper all over the sets with his lines oh, on I remember him. that was Superman. Like, yeah, he's yeah. always well, no, done I know, that. Back in like the 70s, but like in the 50s, he was like a legit actor. But he there was. was like, he was, so well, I know, ago. but he, that's why he's considered one of the greats because he used to be well, in the fifties. He was one of the first method actors. He was, right? yeah. yeah. I think he was. He's considered like the first. Yeah. Yeah. He's the guy who made, made acting, acting, mm-hmm. or broke yeah. the mold of what screen acting was. Yeah. I think because everybody else had that kind of. There's like a the the this what is very is it? like the stage continental uh, like, yeah. yeah yeah the continental accent the, the very transatlantic s- yeah yeah and and uh, like I'm I'll be the first to admit I'm obsessed with 1950s Brando I love I watch on the waterfront streetcar all the time because you can see that like you watch him on screen with other people and you see how he's so different and you see like the birth of this method acting like it's mm-hmm. really real it's really beautiful to watch yeah. I'm obsessed with it so when did the shift happen though but well, you, was it last tango in Paris it like is that been, the shift it was I remember like, uh, when he did yeah. uh, Apocalypse Now and that was what 79 that yeah. you know I remember Francis Ford Coppola was saying you know because they'd worked on The Godfather yeah. you know uh, Brando mm-hmm. came out and then like didn't know his lines and you know they just had to like shut down production so he could talk to Brando through this uh, thing and they just Jesus like rolled Christ. film forever mm-hmm. and then you know edited a performance out of it That's, I mean like <laughs> so the editor is the real hero is what you're saying of that that particular performance <laughs> yeah I mean and, and, yeah. but he would call you know I mean like to have him on set at least at that you know for both Superman and for Apocalypse Now I think mm-hmm. like it was like you show up for a day and you're gonna get like a million dollars yeah yeah. Or some, it was crazy for Superman mm-hmm. yeah it was whatever like he got paid bucks, for that yeah. was like yeah, yeah. that's the one where it's just like a million bucks and you're on there for like a day and you yeah. don't learn your lines and you're like yeah. eh, minimum effort it. yeah mm-hmm. and then he bought an island and it had mosquitoes mm-hmm. and he went crazy yeah and yep kid killed somebody and eventually mm-hmm. died died mm-hmm. lonely old man no i don't know what he died well, of? he died of um pulmonary fibrosis Badness. yeah i really mm-hmm. like marlon yeah. brando sorry <laughs> <laughs> well, was his last movie like the score or something? He did a Frank Oz movie. Yeah, yeah, Something it was. Like was it early Edward aughts? It's the score, I think, was Edward Norton. Yeah, yeah, it was like De, De, Niro? De Niro and Edward yeah. Norton. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was also the Freshman, right? With Johnny, <sighs> was it? no Matthew Broderick. Where he did that the sounds very familiar, and he might have been in so. Don Juan. Yes, he Marco, was Don Juan. Don Marco, Marco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He oh, was. He was in that. That was the early nineties, though, because he didn't die until what two thousand. Or yeah, something Jesus. like that. So he had still been in. I mean, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Again, I yeah the score was his last movie, but he was also in the Michael Jackson video for "You Rock My World," and he did the voice acting for the Godfather video game before he died. Yeah, so. I heard. I that. was gonna God say, I think him. he yeah. did some voice yeah. acting before yeah. he went. But yeah. he and Michael Jackson, I think, were like tight. 
Honestly, that explains a lot. They were they were they were yeah. They collect people. Basically, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah, like it makes sense. Things like yeah. Bobo the chimp and yep. uh, the world's smallest. Yeah, that's what I'm they collect people as they like do. items. Why would, yeah, why would they need uh, him to do voice work when Val Kilmer can do uh, just as good? <laughs> and, Honestly, oh it is just as good. It's just have done it for the video game himself. <laughs> you can feel on. the venom and like the yeah. hate for Val oh Kilmer God. coming, like that he has for Marlon Brando oh, in that insane. moment. Like, yeah, you I'm can insane. hear the disappointment of like meeting your heroes in that moment. Surprised that much of him impersonating Brando like came across in this movie yeah. I'm just yeah. like they just well, I'm gonna say they just went with that, it but he just did it yeah just like I, that's what we got I, I think, mean he's I in th- the costume yeah. and everything doing no it. I think wow. by the end of it they were just like what What the fuck ever I don't care anymore like let's just do it <laughs> so they just roll it it's interesting well go ahead <laughs> that scene where he's like sitting in the chair and like has the whole get up on and like the lights shining down on mm-hmm. him and he's muttering it into yeah. the microphone you guys yeah. will get what I'm talking about but like it reminded me so much of that Christmas episode of the office where Michael's dressed up like God and he's sitting in that <laughs> he's sitting in his God outfit muttering into the microphone like that's a terrible gift when they're opening the Christmas <laughs> gift. It looked just like like it was shot the same, like the delivery was the well, same. But someone in that writer's room was just like, I got the perfect like, idea. Exactly. I love that. I hope that's true. Yeah, it looks that. just like that. It does look just when like Michael it. gets pissed because he can't play Santa, so he turns into God instead yes. and then like is critiquing everyone's Christmas gifts. Yeah. It looks yeah, exactly like it does. that. That's hilarious. The I guy just real. makes these weird fucking choices in like his costume, uh, you know, selection, and like he wears uh, dentures to give himself buck teeth. I was so gonna say changes. which one are you talking about? But you're talking uh, about Brando. Yeah. Well, let's go Brando first. <laughs> then we, then we got to talk about Kilmer yeah. and the scene where it looked like David Thewlis was really trying to kill uh, Val Kilmer. I think he was. I think he was. Yeah. So, I mean, like that. Came, I was like, <laughs> that looked. That was like real. Yeah. Which yeah. one? Where these limp wristed slapping him, or uh, is a different scene? Yeah. Because well, I don't. I, after he's like doing the creepy voice over in yeah. the microphone and he when he's like, like slapping him, him punching yeah. him he and does like, but he's just kind of like <laughs> yeah but, no, it, but like a, a, when he charges him like that looked very real that's I'm sure an they're actor getting some aggression out. taking his uh this his liberty yeah of like yeah it's yeah. like yeah. now i'm supposed to be yeah. pissed at him i can I'm fucking unload pissed. on this motherfucker like, do this yeah scene. <laughs> yeah because stanley said uh um kilmer was like got off the boat and was like you know, so we're not actually going to do like, like this whole paragraph at the beginning. Like, I'm not going to oh, say yeah, that. Oh yeah, he shut know? it down. He's like, I'm not doing that. We're yeah. not going to do it like that. It won't work. Ugh. Yeah, and that like I was saying earlier, that Marco Hofschneider, his his part was a lot bigger in this movie. And it, first of all, it got cut Which because um, the 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 one son he was the like sensitive dressed, dog. He was like dressed boy. as a yeah. butler, but he's uh, very articulate. Gotcha. His part was very large. Pulp fiction was, looking dog. He was supposed to be like the kind of like the kind of sidekick character. Uh. But first Val Kilmer cut his part because he was like because he had this like Shakespearean monologue to start out with. And mm. Val Kilmer's like, no, I don't like that. So he cut his he's cut his part. And then after that, when Brando found the world's smallest man, he was like, no, he's going to be my sidekick. So mm. his part got cut even more. Like but it's yeah. I, kind I respect of a, that choice. I mean, I agree. But, but what kind of director is that? Well, I guess you know that just rolls over to his actors. Yeah. yeah. Because mm-hmm. I assume Frankenheimer was also in awe of Val Kilm or uh, would, Marlon Brando. Maybe, maybe both at that point, but they yeah. he would have to have been right. The guy's such a legend, and I assume that's why Frankenheimer said, "Okay, fine, I'll do it." Is yeah. because it's a chance to work with Brando. I think he's just nobody could rein him in. Like nobody, no matter how they tried. Mm-hmm. It was just bad. But I mean, have crazy. you ever seen anything like that? Where like that you can consciously that you can think of where a uh, actor is like deliberately trying to just fuck with the movie that he's in, right? No. Like he gives two fucks about it because mm-hmm. it's like, well, I'm surrounded with it by a bunch of people in makeup, and this is silly and it's ridiculous, and I don't care. And so I'm just mm-hmm. going to fuck off in every scene that I'm in. I'm going to wear yeah. a, uh, a ice bucket. an ice bucket on my head. And <laughs> let's have, it's let's, hot, Colin. Oh, let's have it's the hot. girl come over and actually put the ice in, in the bucket. And we'll yeah. this if you're going to have the ice bucket on your head, why not? <laughs> like, that's a, if, yeah. you know, if yeah. we're already there, like, do it. I mean, for as many, you know, like, bad movies and bad performances as we've watched on this show, like, I feel like even when we feel like actors are phoning it in, at least they're like autopiloting, you know, they're not purposely trying to sabotage anything. They're just autopiloting. Yeah. But like, this feels like 
no, I'm going to take this down with me. Is yeah. what this movie feels like. This which is like is, a kamikaze project. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know anything else that's oh, even like that. Talking about, I was wrapped with attention every time Brandon was talking. I was like, <laughs> what is he going to say? I know. I was, no, I, I was yes. all for, I'm like, yeah, but, I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I want to know what this character has I to agree. Say. I think at I'm some point. I'm totally with Brandon. I think at some movie. point the director's like, you know what? He's making it more interesting than it is. Let's just go with it's, it. One of characters who are talking, I'm most interested in listening to what Brando has to I say agree. about the current situation that's going on. Yeah. So you're saying this is a good thing for the movie. Well, I suppose it's the only reason that we're talking about been. it tonight is because of these choices that Brando and Kilmer sure. made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe we just get a just a mediocre movie with people in costumes and makeup. Yeah. And well, shit. look at the rest of the movie. If you cut all those scenes out of it and you just had the David Thewlis for Rosa Bulk Ugh. story with the people in costume... That's the movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> David Thewlis is horribly miscast in this movie. That that I mean, he's not a bad actor, but he's not leading man material at uh, all. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I, don't know, I don't know what they wanted or required from this role, but he's very he's very quiet in this role. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's, that goes back to the fact that well, they've cast Val Kilmer for that role, and he switched. Yeah, you know, they I didn't. Know. That wasn't the intention. Actually, it was <laughs> it was originally Richard Stanley's uh, intention. He wanted. Uh, Daniel Thewlis. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and yeah. Then, at the time he couldn't do it, and then it ended up that he eventually could do it, so they brought him back in. Now, I think if you watch this movie as just a uh, David Thewlis or Thulis, I don't know which one. I don't know either. I I, I've always said Thulis. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, if, you, if you go through this movie just watching his interpretation as him being the director of this movie. <laughs> Like and that's how he's acting. That makes the whole thing for me because I believe because there's that scene where he's just rubbing his right, eyes, going, yeah, like, oh, yeah. "Oh my god!" Yeah. I've never seen. I the, guess that makes sense. Yeah, the embodiment of "Oh Jesus Christ, what is happening?" On screen. in a person before, and that was it. So I believe that he I just, just want to get out of here. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. just watching a director and be like. I like that. I'm going to use that. And that's, that's <laughs> like, where yeah. most of his performance comes from. Yeah. Because that's what it feels like. He is the, the director's ma- representation of this movie. Because how many times in this movie is he just like crumpled in a chair? Yeah. Right. like or always. Or himself. himself. At some point. Yeah. Just like, oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I, I feel think, his pain yeah. knowing I think you're that right. it's reflecting off the director. It's but like I, a mirror into the director's soul at this I point. I feel like that was the only moment, though, that he was a good audience proxy. Otherwise, I think he's a fucking terrible audience proxy. There's just, very, he's know, just, inaccessible for some reason. Reason. I don't, I don't know. Because his him. point of view is, and see, this is the thing. This is so. This is based on a novel by H.G. Wells. Mm-hmm. Second one on yeah. the Freak Show. Yeah, we did mm-hmm. the time the machine. The time machine. Yeah, sweet. Um, but I think the time that the you know the, the the novel was written, you got this guy who's shipwrecked who ends up on this island, and there's a bunch of, a bunch of mutant freaks on it, mm-hmm. and the protagonists. Uh, Hold on, you're making this the premise sound interesting. Yeah, I want you to stop <laughs> yeah. doing that yeah. for the purposes of this movie that yeah. we watched. But continue. <laughs> All right, but the, the protagonist and this works its way into the into the the lines of dialogue in the script mm-hmm. where. He sees this as an affront to nature and like all of this is an abomination and like, you know, Dr. Moreau is close to in league with the devil for the way that he's deformed and defiled the human being. Mm -hmm. And Moreau has the like, these are my children. And, you know, it's like I'm trying to to help life and, you know, create these pacifist uh, creatures who wouldn't harm a fly. And And so they have the law and all this other stuff. And I wonder if when you watch the movie, it's like, which uh, sensibility do you uh, subscribe to? Because if you say like, well, you know, it's like these are, I mean, aside from the ones that go, you know, are, are clearly the wild animals, but I mean, the Ron Perlman camp, there's two different camps on the Island. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you, you know, side with that philosophy of, you know, that, you know, he's created these, uh, they're misshapen, but actually decent creatures. Then the Thulis character comes off as like this rigid, you know, like this is horrible stuff, you know. And then I wonder if that makes him inaccessible in that way. I don't. Th- I, but he becomes I, right later. Yeah. So mm-hmm. are we- well, yeah, but that's again that's the, where the the film is going to take you sure. ultimately. It's like the the real horror is in you know I it's don't, this human animal. I feel like the movie didn't do enough to make the creatures feel sympathetic. Mm-hmm. Like it, 
I froze a bulk was like our our like starting point with that, but it just didn't go far enough to like really right. show the tragedy of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the only time I really kind of felt it is when the when the hyena character like is like going through his friend's bones and like the crematorium or whatever. Like yeah. for a second there, I was like, oh, this is really fucking sad. And yeah. then like, but then it like quickly takes a campy turn, and you're like, ah, and that feeling's gone. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, it was the last it, moment. And yeah, after that you're just like. There, yeah, there needs to be more sympathy for the the, the tragedy of like their being. Yeah, if that's what they want, yeah. yeah, like that's if that's what they were going. Well, for, who is the most be, sympathetic yeah. uh, animal man character? I, I assume you know Feruza Balk is too. She's you she's know, too human. Woman. She's too human. Too human. Yeah. yeah. So what someone who's actually yeah. in the makeup, which there's a fucking shitload of it in this movie. Yeah, there is. Yeah, accredited to the Stan Winston uh, orcs. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I get yeah because their facial structure is all yeah. the same yeah, on all the, of them. Uh, dreadlocks. Yeah. Feels very orcish. I would say the, like, cat one that got killed, I guess, would probably be the most sympathetic. But, like, I don't know. We but just, he's like. He's gone too early. Yeah, he's gone too early. Yeah, and, no like, constant. yeah. But he's only sympathetic because he's on the receiving end of a trial and then, right. you know, and is punished for it because apparently he's violated the law by killing and. An, an innocent creature for right. food. Right. right. And, but then whoever who kills him, you automatically lose sympathy for that character. So he's out. Right. Yeah. Dreadlock so do we, dog boy. Right. So do we have yeah. sympathy for... Uh, hyena? The, hyena? No. Mm-mm. None. Because I don't. I no. Don't. None. I don't. Maybe you're supposed to. Maybe that's what he's set up to be, but I Yeah, don't. I don't. This movie's no. kind of like, uh, was it War for the Planet of the Apes? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I didn't there's watch like War yet. Caesar, and there's the other one. Thing, it's like they're yeah. animals, but in, even within the animal kingdom, they do a this really faction. good job in those movies of creating sympathy for those characters. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. No, a Koba. really good job. Yeah, Koba was that the name of the? I think so. Yeah, yeah Koba. In the part two. Yeah. So hyena, yeah. hy- well, it was a hyena swine. Yes, hyena is swine. kind of like the analogy for Koba, right? Yes. Who's like. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not men, we're animals, and the animal part of us should, you know, reign. And so we're going to destroy this human, uh, right. you know, the, our creator. The human and human is not to be. Yeah, the human society even, even that he's trying Ron to Even Ron Perlin's build. character kind of says that at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like he's, That's his, his ultimate decision. To stand yeah. on two legs is not what we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. He, he, he says, no, we will, I don't want more scientists to come back to here. The regression is probably where we're supposed to be. I think that's kind of More where it animal ends like. up. Yeah. With the animal instinct. Animal. Is the Ron Perlman character, is that the um, Bella Lugosi yes. character? Yes, yes. The, the Sayer of the Law. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we should say that this movie was made at least twice before. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. 1932. With Bella Lugosi. Yep. Who is Dr. Moreau in that one? Oh, hold on. Let me look. It's probably like... Uh, Charles Lawton. Charles Lawton. Well, of oh. course. Yeah, okay. That would make sense. <laughs> And then it was remade in the 70s with, uh, was it Burt Lancaster yep. mm-hmm. and Michael York, I yep. think? Yeah. And was it done somewhere in between there in the 50s or something? Did they do that? It was I Island? feel like yeah. it was. I feel like this is the fourth version of it, but I don't know for sure okay. if that's true or not. I heard a rumor that Richard Stanley may actually get a shot at doing it again. Let's I think do it. Why? Yeah. I'm why down. Why would you even go back? Because the guy's obsessed and there's obsessed. interest because and of the, the technology now. And, yeah. Sure. That's what, I feel like that's the logic for it well, every time it gets remade is the technology is better. Because right. now they're looking at all the Planet of the Apes movies. Yeah. Like, we can do this so much better now. Yeah. We can have a thing for it. But if we've... If we've got the Planet of the Apes movies, do we need an island? Fuck yeah, I'd go. Island? I'd watch this. If they remade this, I was like, but out of, I'm there. But maybe just, is it out of just the general curiosity of knowing this movie, knowing the older movie and everything? Oh, like, for what sure. What do you think a general audience would feel <laughs> about that movie? Um, it probably it would, would they, but sorry. Marketing. It would depend on the marketing. Honestly. Exactly. It really so, would. Again, like exactly. I said, are we not men? Yeah. I think it, I I suspect that the general audience will feel the way about a remake as they did about the one in 1996 and just not go see it. I think they. Were, I don't. Think <laughs> you know what? Either. I yeah. think you're right about that. Yeah, because I, I just think that the concept, you know, it's like even as it was happening, and it's like okay, you got this like struggle between these two, you know, different uh, factions who you know are interpreting their nature differently. And you've got the human spectators caught in the middle of this and trying yeah. to lord over them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like it just uh, apes. The way apes. Yeah, I, just I suppose. Put that money into apes at that point. Yeah. But I think it almost would maybe work better as a book. Like I mean, it probably in the <laughs> yeah. novel you get more out of it than you do actually seeing it. Where it <laughs> it's becomes probably true. 
you know, guys in animatronic masks with nicely articulated lips. I like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> running around in a jungle. Surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do think the, like, effects and the makeup actually were pretty decent in this movie. Like, I didn't really have a problem with any yeah, of it. I thought it looked fine. Like, yeah. Was they right. seemed, uh, I mean, t- they're just a little, I felt a little big and cartoonish. That was mm. my feelings. Uh, certainly appropriate for the time, I'm guessing. But like I said, I had a real big... Um, Token raise our feeling as I was watching this movie. Yeah, I, I think they're I, babies. Oh my god, <laughs> it's true. It's true. It was, we were recording TMNT two. The whole the secret of the U is the whole yeah. time we were watching this. Two, I, it felt a little too. You know how yeah. um, you know how Samuel L. Jackson describes the uh, the villainous character as he's talking about the art pieces when during his introduction oh, in, uh-huh. six, in uh, Unbreakable. Yeah. yeah, that's how I feel about. Mm-hmm. These characters. Oh, uh, look at the torso. Features, the torso yes. is yeah. too big large. and their head yeah. is larger yeah. than all that. That's I, how I felt about these. I characters. think it's possible I have more of an appreciation for it after watching the documentary about I'm it. Quite, yeah. Yeah. Oh, because certainly. Because you, yeah. you see more detail of like what really went into it and you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like they put a lot of detail into a lot of extras. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, to me, like, like, like they, we didn't really see the hog lady very well. If you see her up close, it is impressive. Well, like, it, it's oh, insane. Yeah. It's just like that story about how in like the original Lord of the, Lord of the Rings trilogy, like Peter Jackson wrote a backstory for every single orc right. in the movie yeah. and developed their armor based on their backstory. Yeah. Like, I don't think quite that much thought was put into this, but like no. somewhere halfway Honestly, in between no. that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it we was a lot of effort. It was it. definitely, you know, it's an been, effort. Yeah. For and sure. especially because like when they had, their crazy moments on the set of this and like Marlon Brando or Valcom or whoever was holding things up, the makeup people were working. They were just like, there was like, that just gives us more time. Yeah. That, there was, yeah. Yeah, there was, there was time when like there was weeks that nothing was being done, but all the makeup crew was still working on pieces. Like mm-hmm. they put a lot of effort and you really see it. In, yeah, like if you the, give the makeup yeah. people more time, they're just like, sure, fine. Yep. Yeah. We then we can better. create new and weirder yeah. shit. It's, and then they're all sitting there, yeah, man, we don't have anything else to do, so let's yeah, fight a yeah, fucking I dog. Got this, I got yeah. a fucking great yeah. idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's true. Hyena yeah. swine. That's good everyone idea. was just high and fucking on this yeah. movie set. Yeah. Like everyone. And they're paying crazy. you to be there. Yeah. Like I remember. I hope. <laughs> the During the documentary, there's an interview with the hog lady, and she's like, you know, I think we kind of just forgot we had lives elsewhere. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. It's, like the, it's the apocalypse now. She's like, like the I monster have a movie. Three kids at home. <laughs> yeah. It's you got in, they, We went into the jungle. There were too many of us. There was, you know, we just uh, right. we went crazy. Little by little, we went crazy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what happens in these. It mo- is. So are yeah. we looking at this wrong? Then is this like one of the all time great? I mean, like, tell me uh, what's the right way to look at this. And I'll well, I mean, try. as. A prosthetic monster movie of which they occupy pretty much every goddamn scene. There's a lot of them. We're saying yeah. that we like the you know, animatronic they look good. Yeah. Yeah. makeup effects. Like, and they're just off in the jungle and the movie itself, the narrative kind of spirals out of control as it goes along and mm-hmm. shit's going crazy and people are breaking down and wailing and, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of crying and gnashing of teeth. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is one of the all time great monster movies. How dare I mean, you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing it out. There. I think I'm not it, saying I've subscribed to this. Dare you? I think it's because I'm going to start putting it and be like, I like this movie more than I like The Wolfman. I'm going to start doing that to you. That's what I'm going to do. If you keep talking this nonsense, uh, okay. I think if you look at production quality, yes. If you look at narrative, no, no, like no, 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 no. no, no. no. If you look at just the quality of like the costume design mm-hmm. and stuff, yeah, it's one of the better ones mm-hmm. for sure. Like especially because I feel like it ages pretty well. Like. I, I, I think don't so. think it looks particularly I bad. No, I don't think it screams 1996. No, Except not for at all. like some dodgy CGI effects with like little rat. The monkeys. CGI True. looks bad. Yeah, yeah. I will. I Lara will agree with that. Or whatever is yeah, the, the cheetah, the cheetah yeah. person, thing at the yeah. I will agree with that for sure. Some, you can, I love but when, otherwise, <laughs> well, I love when the the real actor runs behind something. Yeah. Yeah. The CGI oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. actor runs out the, the other the side. Wipe, the, the screen wipe or whatever. <laughs> I love those. But you'd say that basically, if they were going to do it today, you may use a lot of the same technology to pull like these oh I feel like if it was done today it'd be all mocap like it'd be all motion capture then that would be it I will give mad props to all of the people acting like animals in this movie yeah what is the comparison Um, Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes yeah is yeah. that the, oh, is that the nearest equivalent yeah, we have? Probably. Yes. That was what, and that's not really good. Full prosthetic? Yeah, I think so. And or that like one's the bad. Grinch? No, I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, They're not but animals. This is, I know this is closer. In Planet of the Apes, the Grinch is setting, better. 
You know, I mean, The Grinch is better than Planet of the Apes, I think, but. I mean, I fucking hate The Grinch, but that's. But like, I'm, I'm just looking at preference. the prosthetics. Right, I'm just yeah. talking about the makeup. That's, that's, that's all I'm talking about. about yeah. yeah. The makeup um, job is good on that movie. I don't know, everything's off. I just, I can't look at that movie. Uh, as a, yeah. and just, I just, can't. just talking about the I makeup. A, I have a child. I can't. I can't. I can't see the makeup as a separate thing. I have a child who watched that movie for like three months straight, and I can't. I can't have thoughts on that movie because it's Jim it's Carrey lost his goddamn mind making that movie. He's not. The I same. believe that he is not the same person on the, the other same. side of that movie. Yeah. yeah, I believe that he was talking about how like like he wore these super thick contacts right to get the Grinch eyes, yeah, and yellow eyes. Du- saw, and yeah. dust would get uh, under. There was like a really dusty set for whatever reason. Sure. And like the dust would get up under his contacts and rub between his eyes and the contacts yeah. and rub his eyes raw. And I was like, this sounds like a fucking nightmare. You could not yeah. pay me enough money to deal with this shit. And that was like one of the things he complained about. Like, yeah. could you imagine wearing that's just one part of your whole fucking costume? Like, mm. ugh. No, nope. people aren't just meant to wear that shit. No, no, they're not. No, <laughs> they're not. It's, it's bad for your skin. It's glued on and doesn't breathe. Well, and speaking yeah. of speaking of that, um, I. Like I, I knew Ron Perlman was in this. I had seen it before, but mm-hmm. every time, like ever since I read his book and I like listened to a couple of interviews with him, like anytime he's in prosthetics, I'm like hyper aware of it because in his book he talks about how he has a severe allergy right. to to prosthetic makeup, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's all that fucker does. That's all yeah. he does. Yeah. Like, uh, the, uh, aside from Sons of Anarchy, that's all he I was fucking say, does. Sons like, of Anarchy had to have been a fucking dream for him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah. just like, like every time I see him in in this movie, I'm like. <sighs> Oh God! This man's like dying inside, you know I mean? wearing all this shit for what? And for what? Like yeah. for he's what? Yeah, hardly in this movie at all. Like you could yeah. cut out his role entirely, and it would mean nothing. You know, and it's funny because he's got a face that doesn't seem like it would need too much to accentuate. Like his features, yeah. as they already are, he's like a beast of a man anyway. He is. Right. right. Yeah. So you would think he wouldn't need much, but damn. but they put so much shit on him so in this much. movie. So much. Like, you can't even tell Tim if you don't know it's him. Yeah, you, no, you can't. If you, you don't know, know it's him, voice, you don't. You know it's yeah. Him, but, yeah. Yeah. But he looks like a fucking cat anyway. So he does. Yeah. He's supposed to be a ram. I think, yeah, I think so. He had the ram. horns. Yeah, he's got those, the curly horns. A goat, kind of, yeah. Is it like the fucking goat from <laughs> yeah, the Devil's Rain. No, 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 <laughs> no. What's the one where we there was the fucking. Um, the fucking ram thing. It was always like, ah, and what was the oh, fucking movie? Was with it the, Sorcerers? With the twi- was it Sorcerers? Oh, Sorcerers? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. I forgot about the ram. Yeah. I want to bring that back for everybody. Remember oh that one? Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorcerers. Yep, the horny goat, man. Yeah, yeah. that was wonderful. Fucking goat. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <sighs> I, so where were we? <laughs> I don't, what are we talking about? <laughs> so Val Kilmer is in oh, this movie. Oh, dude, Val Kilmer, and his character is like so. He's like a, a was he, well, he was a neurosurgeon. He's a vet. He was basically the vet, <laughs> the keeper of the animal people. Yep. Yeah. But why? I don't like. What's his reason for being here? Why does he stay? Uh, he so. Pure he's curiosity. A, he's like uh, he had. He was doing studies in something that was kind of close to or kind of connected to what. Dr. Moreau was doing. He wrote him. He wrote a paper. He wrote a thesis, and then he corresponded with Moreau. And Moreau Who's was a like, Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Yeah, Moreau. Dr. Mm-hmm. Moreau, and he's like, "Come to the island." So he came to the island, and I'm sure they'll do a prequel one day. <laughs> I was going to say his character coming to the island, and being like, <laughs> well, "What are you doing?" And then slowly being convinced to help out for the next ten years. But we're, yeah, I was gonna say, going to say we're ten insane. years in. Why is he still here ten years later? Yeah. Is my question. Because he he's goes planning. crazy. Yeah, he's going crazy. He's already he's crazy. Nuts. Yeah, he's crazy. He's when already we meet crazy, him. and then he's just slowly planning his takeover. Yeah. Because Murrow can't live forever, and eventually he'll be the lord of yeah, the he's just uh, waiting. island. He's waiting for the coup. He's waiting. To take Everybody over. wants to be in charge. Apparently, I except guess. David, David Thulis, who yeah, wants to get the fuck out. Charged, like I want to yeah. leave. Yep. I want to take my coconuts and go home. And Feruza Balk, <laughs> who's just uh, she's like she's like an innocent, I guess. It would I, appear so. Yeah. She's a uh, exposition dump a lot of the time. She is in this movie. Poor well, thing. she's also giving Thulis a motivation to do something in this movie other than just try to flee, right? Because yeah. he is apparently in love with her and she needs you can tell a because he sticks his thumb in her face. And that 
<laughs> that potential age difference makes me uncomfortable because we're not told like how old she is, but she looks very young. Like this is the same year as the craft. She does so, look very young. Yeah. Very young. Uh, and we don't know. I mean, he's clearly an adult man, like mid thirties at least, sure. right? Maybe older. I don't know what he I is mean, in this? He's very. Uh, he always looks the same to he's me. Very, yeah, he yeah, always very, does look well, the he's same. Very yeah. cocaine thin. He's yeah. very thin. <laughs> he's got very that. Thin. Uh, he's, he's got, got that big Sid Vicious and body. Like small body. Yeah. yeah. Sid Vicious <laughs> syndrome. Basically, yeah. right. Yeah. If you took it off, he would just be ribs. Yeah. Yeah. And the skinniness. Yeah. He's kind of like. In Harry Potter, Gary they put a, in Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. they put a bunch of cloaks on him in Harry yeah. Potter, so you can't tell. Well, he's but, basically serious you know. black version. Uh, yeah, of yeah. yeah. They give him a three piece suit in Harry Potter to cover it he's up. Yeah, yeah. Put a vest a on him and bulk him up. Yep. But you can never, t- I can never tell. Like um, ages in movie, you know, like, yeah, in movie I don't romances. Know how old he'd be in this. I don't know how old she he is or how old young, she though. looks younger than yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But and eventually she's becoming more and more. Her cat features are becoming more pronounced. Yeah. She has one of those faces. It looks like it has a bunch of makeup on it that you can't tell. You know, it's like she's got some kind of prosthetic going. Has she got contacts or something? She looks weird. Her eyes look so big in this movie. And her teeth they are do. gigantic yeah. even before eyes. she starts getting the fangs. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, she's got. She's so. Uh, her characteristics. Her features are already so kind of like animated, severe, animated, extended. Yeah. Naturally, mm-hmm. that to add mm-hmm. on to it, I don't think you. You can get subtle with it and be like, yeah, that's her. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. that's not her. I don't have yeah. those teeth. Holly, did you did you read the, the interview about with Faruza Balk about this movie? Ooh, oh, I didn't read She's in the documentary and she's yeah. talking about how, yeah, she she tried to What Brando said to her? Did you hear what Brando oh. said to her? <laughs> oh, yeah, didn't she? Yes, yeah, yeah, she did. She's like, I'm, gonna, I'm going to the jungle. Yeah, she, she had a production assistant take her to the airport. And yeah, then he drove she her got, like 2,500 kilometers. <laughs> right, and yeah. the studio was like, yeah. we will ruin you. Yep. Get yep. back here. Yep, and they brought her back. Yeah, her agent's yeah. like, no, dude, you can't leave. <laughs> was she, apparently she went up to Brando, allegedly, mm-hmm. and yeah. it was like, do you want to run our lives together? And he goes, listen, listen, sweetie, you're a pretty girl. I'm me. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's what so we're working for, with here. So much yeah. for working with the younger talent. Yeah, yeah. Back she was to yeah. The he yeah. did not care. Did not give a fuck. He actually said, I think, which was quoted by somebody on that documentary, that mm-hmm. basically... He said, you know, something like, how much do you think we can, you know, burn of Bob Shea's money today or something? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. he was there just like, we're so far away. We can do whatever the hell we want. Mm-hmm. Fuck those, you know, the money crunchers. I'm like, that's why I'm like, do you even like acting or being in movies? Exactly. Yeah. No. He- do you care about your image? Or like you know your personality yeah. or what your screen values no, are because it has to be devaluing every time you do one of these yeah. fucking movies. And if you don't care, why do you keep acting? Yeah, like why not just quit? I don't understand the end it. Of his career and the end of his life, he had a lot of contempt for his own career. It was very odd. I'm sure he had yeah. contempt even mm-hmm. earlier than that. I mean, look at uh, what he did with like he won an Oscar and he sent oh he sent a Native American sent yeah. One, uh, yeah whatever her name was Lightfoot or whatever to go accept, accept his Oscar it, yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. And like he had contempt for a long time for his chosen profession. Yeah. Yeah. And he went so method. He was like, you know, this acting thing is for shit. And it's the only thing that I'm good at or people will let me do. It. He's probably a very sad man. He I was. Mean, probably. A, a rich, wealthy, sad man who owned an island. He had a lot of depression. His dad, his dad was an abusive alcoholic and mm. he had a lot well, of, he had a lot of issues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kilmer. So what's his fucking deal? I mean, he's an eccentric. He has no good excuse as far as I'm concerned. I mean, granted, oh, I granted, that we know okay, him, yeah. finding out about your wife there? leaving you, you know, while yeah. you, by watching the news sucks. I, I mean, that does that suck. That totally I, that's sucks, terrible. but he definitely burned someone on the set of this movie with a cigarette on purpose. That's true. Yeah, that's fucked up. So, yeah, like. Yeah, he's like, I'm more important than and this is just something I, you know. But that's mm-hmm. why, again, that's why I just keep thinking. It's like there's photographic a record of what you're doing in this movie for a guy who delivers consistently, I would say prior to this anyway, and since good performances. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is every choice that he makes is at odds with the movie that's happening. Exactly. That is the best way to describe it. It's (laughs) top secret. He's the fuck up. Oh my God. He's just being contrarian. Like he's, he's just whatever you're going to do. I'm going to do the opposite. Just because I can. Just because I can. I don't care. What do you want to do? Yeah. I'm doing the opposite. I mean, one of, one of the most fucking famous stories from this set is the fact that there was a day that Marlon Brando wouldn't come out of his trailer until Val Kilmer did. And Val Kilmer did the exact exact same thing and they lost an entire day of shooting because both of them stayed in their trailers the whole day yeah it's so insane and it's like how does this work I mean because- I was just going up to his fucking trailer and being like you ready 
I'm out now. I would light their, both their trailers on fire, smoke them out. Yeah. Literally. Like, yeah. I'm sure yeah, that went through yeah. somebody's yeah. mind. It probably did. Point. Yeah. But somebody was is, off yelling, going, what the, what the, what the, what Pour light them on fire. And Do you, it. and you know, poor fucking Ron Perlman and Feruza Balk are in full makeup, ready to go. Yep. Ready oh, to yes. shoot. Oh, it's everybody. Yes. Uh, because, yeah. because those two are professionals and handled it like champs. And think about all the makeup artists that put the prosthetics on every single extra that day. Mm-hmm. And they all just had to sit around and wait in the fucking like, Australia sun. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Good yeah. times making movies, <laughs> but this is said something about like uh, I guess the way that the Hollywood business works. It's like even if you know New Line Cinema is paying the bill, and you know Bob Shea is a millionaire, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he was, and yeah. John Frankenheimer has this great you know career, esteemed career, and he's a millionaire probably, right? But when you bring these egos in and these personalities, and this is you know because the public wants to see them. Like, it doesn't matter if you're their boss or not. Like, they are the boss when yeah. they walk onto this. And, the, like, that power dynamic is, like, something that is dangerous. And this is yeah. movie. He yeah. goes to show yeah. you, like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true. It really is. Together. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And just put a couple of assholes in a movie together and they just fucked with everything. I don't know. Yeah, it makes you wonder if this had been filmed just, like, in California, if that could have been corralled a little bit more. Right? You know? I was thinking like, the same probably, thing. Like, the fact that they, they were in this remote area that, like, they're just surrounded by locals and natives, like, they have they have the power, you yeah. know? They don't have the execs around them. Right. And even if, I'm sure there's there seems to be always an exec from the company on site. Yeah. For shoots like this, but you know, you just be like, well, fuck that guy. We're mm-hmm. gonna do what we want. Like it's yeah, he's not Marlon Brando. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. if you're closer, I'm sure, like you said, you can. Mm-hmm. It's easier to corral something like this. Mm-hmm. But well, and like okay, so for the dailies situation, like were, were they not sending dailies for this? I movie? think that's why that that's why Stanley got fired because they would send stuff back, and mm-hmm. then the reports or whatever. Oh no, no, I think uh, there was a guy that they had sent over. Mm-hmm. And he reported back, like, you know, I got here and it is fucking chaos. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's four mm-hmm. days in and Stanley does not have a handle on this. And I get that because, I mean, there's nothing in his filmography and those other two movies that he made that suggests that he has, you know, A, works well with people or B, has a firm control over stuff. Yeah. He does seem yeah. kind of like, That's fair. I'm being you know, influenced by the way that the yeah. stars are all lined up today and they have mm-hmm. something to do with this ley line mm-hmm. and whatever. And so that's how we're informing. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, uh, yeah. Like I said, you got to listen to this guy talk. He's oh, an interesting it's character. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, it's great. Uh, it, <laughs> when I watched the documentary, I knew it was going to be fantastic when he was talking about his first meeting with Marlon Brando. He's like, well, I was really nervous about meeting him. So naturally, I turned to witchcraft. Mm-hmm. I was oh, like, yes, boy. I'm in. I'm all in for this entire thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, the guy's a trip. Boy. Yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's great. Uh-huh. I know he's made several documentaries that I saw. They were included on the Dust Devil special edition that came oh, out. Wow. And it was like, these are the other things that he's done, where he went off into the wilds of Afghanistan before the war, obviously, but the Russians were still there. And he rode with, the Russians I think... were in Afghanistan? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Good grief. That was their Vietnam. They were there forever and then had to back out. But So he rode with the Taliban, we I think. We need to study history more, Sean, apparently. <laughs> I, I didn't know that either. Really? So. Have you not seen Rambo 3, Sean? No. What? I mean, if I did it, exited it immediately. Oh, so, you know. dear God. I mean, Rambo. And that's yeah. Well, that's a Are challenge they serious? that I think the gauntlet has like been Like I said, it down. went in and it went oh. out, you oh, know? No. Like, I, I've seen all the Rambos. I've seen them all. No. I don't need to watch them again. Oh, no, it's done. The damage <laughs> is done. Rambo 3 is coming. Yeah, listen, Rambo ah. 3 is coming to the Saturday Night Free Show. You God can, damn yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> we just sealed our own fate, Son Sean. Bitch. Oh, wow. Uh... I don't even remember what I was saying. We were in yeah, Russia. No, we shocked yeah, oh, he was like yeah. Russia. Yeah, Afghanistan, he's a crazy Russia. dude who ran off and made a you know the, he would go to the far <laughs> corners of the earth like looking uh, for. Yeah. I think he actually thought that he was in pursuit of the Holy Grail. At one point, this Richard Stanley yeah. like, mm-hmm. thought that he had uh, narrowed in on it and it got away from him at the last minute. I mean, like he, uh, he's a uh, but those those documentaries aren't very good. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like I mean, I have a lot of love for hardware. But, yeah, you do. Yeah, <laughs> some, some would say too much. Yeah. <laughs> but some, you know, the other one. I get that a, a lot of people don't like that one. But I mean, that's basically 
you know, the level of yeah. skill and talent that the guy, I think that's his best movie. And he's, and he's cr- probably, he's so crazy, but he is hard to listen to for long periods of time. I don't know if you, Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like for he's sure. Really hard to listen to for a long time. Yeah, we have, yeah. We have, <laughs> you got to watch some. We got to pull up some interview clips with yeah. uh, with Richard oh, Stanley. Oh, he's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he did go on. He directed uh, like several shorts. I think he wrote a couple of movies. The one yeah. I think that I actually saw that wasn't all that. Oh, anyway, he did a, a segment of. It was called The Mother of Toads, and it was in oh, well, you've, the Theater Bazaar. That title's caught my attention excellent. Right that. Yeah, yeah. You're, did you see The Theater Bazaar? It was like these no. four uh, anthology, mm-hmm. and Richard Stanley got to sounds, do one. Sounds mm-hmm. awesome, though. Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of unremarkable, but I'm like, oh, at least you're still, you know, working. Damn. Mm-hmm. But he's never, I mean, that's his career. It's that's fire. This yeah, no, movie he's done, destroyed he's his He's done career. shorts and little documentaries, but this was, like, he's, yeah, he's yeah, done Yeah, you're never film. getting hired He's again. done with film. Yeah. But I think because that's the word that probably went around Hollywood. It's like this guy cannot actually, he may have imagination, mm-hmm. but he cannot like physically, you know, he cannot marshal a film yeah. set. Mm-hmm. And I think he lives in like the fucking hills of goddamn Peru or something. Like he's, he's out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That sounds like where he'd be most comfortable. This movie, is, no, this movie it, broke he's him, very huh? Comfortable yeah. There. yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. As long as yeah. he's happy. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Bravo to him. I just want to know what he, I like, every time you see him, you know, he's still talking about films and, you know, stuff. I'm like, how does this guy make money? Is he living off the residuals of hardware and dust devil? It can't be. Can't be. <laughs> or his participation in, uh, he got screenplay credit on the he other did. Dr. Moroso. And because people keep coming back to this going, what the fuck is this movie about? Yeah. Yeah. I don't he know. He, li- checks. he lived out in the fucking Australian jungle for months. I think he can just stay he's fine being and homeless he's yeah. fine he's got yeah. his little shack he's and he's good monkeys for food and shit maybe, oh, you, know, maybe. Yeah. you know he's a vegetarian <laughs> Uh, you know what? You're, you're probably right. Witchcraft you know vegetarian. vegetarian yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know he yeah. only kills <laughs> Wiccan chickens yeah. for the yeah for the ritual. Yeah, he uses every part of everything. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. You gotta throw the bones and read them. And mm-hmm. oh yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. It's like Predator Two. Just like ah oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I got, the okay. Batman is coming. <laughs> I'm you sorry. See this man, this is dread. True dread. <laughs> That's right. It's my key. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to take it back to the beginning of this movie, but no, okay. When the we when can't start the over. <laughs> when the <laughs> when the beast woman has that baby oh, in yeah. the first oh, act, yeah. like okay, was that okay? That baby, the qu- the cuts were really quick. First of all, yeah. But I was like, is that a prop baby or is that, that was like a, a prop it was? It had to have been baby. right that was because like baby. they had prosthetics yeah, to make it give it like a pig face, mm. but like and it had like it's weird like big eyes, and yeah, and big eyes. No, and was, yeah, it's, but it's like fake. it was a really well done prop that's baby. Well it done was because like I its agree. movements and it's, like everything looked very I'll natural. That. To, that's why I asked because I was like I'm confused because it looks so good. They probably had five months to perfect. Yeah, yeah. Shooting schedule of this movie. Yeah. yeah. Too bad they couldn't do better on the deliver on the mother herself. She was obviously a big puppet. Thing. That laboratory yeah. um reminded me of a ho- way worse movie that I if anyone brings to the freak show, I will not be here for this episode. Um it reminded me of the Hollow Man laboratory. <laughs> oh yeah. Jesus. Because it grabs the dog and swings it. Well, and like oh, all God. the animals they had in cages in Hollow yeah. Man and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I was like, Oh, I'm being horribly triggered by Hollow Man right now. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, for whatever reason it reminded me of the uh the Ali Sheedy movie. What's what was the uh, the dog movie? Chomps? No, no. it was. Uh, fucking... I was like, I don't know <laughs> this sorry. movie. What is that? Fuck? Uh, it was with Lance Henriksen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man's yeah. best friend. Man's best friend. Oh, yes, man's yeah, best yeah, friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're fucking. Oh, I didn't like that movie. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did not like man's that movie. Man's best friend. That movie. Uh-uh. Yeah. Like, hey, at least there was no gratuitous dog murder in this movie, right? Yeah. You know, all we had was like one like broken necked rabbit, but it the, looked like a fucking stuffed rabbit. animal. It looked like a Walmart yeah, stuffed fine. animal hung on that tree. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah, it right. wasn't. It wasn't so bad. Did you? It could have been way worse. When they introduced Val Kilmer, he was just kind of sitting in the back of the boat, like with a snake wrapped around his arm. Yeah, for no I, no close up, and it's just but, like what the. Fuck? Well, Val Kilmer did a shit ton of that stuff in this movie. You know that like blue armband on his arm for this whole movie? That's just because he wanted it. Bad, yeah. And the director kept saying, take that shit off. And every time the director said that, he just like moved it or put it in a different position to fuck up the continuity. Mm-hmm. So like he just likes to... F- this yeah. movie, he was just like, 
I'm going to take it down. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's going to be because they're not science fiction guys, <clears throat> right? I imagine that Kilmer and and uh, Brando are not into this type of thing, right? And mm-hmm. for them to be surrounded by a bunch of mechanical and practical makeup effects to them was like this is them. not actually yeah. like a serious thing at mm-hmm. all. Right, because look at where they came from. It's mm-hmm. just, it's, 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 Batman's not a far leap from this. Like, there's okay, a lot of costuming in <laughs> Batman. It's, well, sure. But it's also like, there are nothing but human beings in Batman. Yeah, but, but like, the costuming and like, like stuff is as ridiculous as it is in this movie. Like, especially those later Batman movies get ridiculous. Well, like, that's maybe the thing. He was playing along with the ridiculousness yeah. of Batman. Yeah. And here you, it's like yeah, Stanley. Like, do you remember Tommy Lee Jones like, in that gonna movie? Be serious. Right. Oh, that's very true. Very animated, yeah. very yeah. cartoonish. Yeah, it's very. Yeah. yeah. I see what that's saying. Yeah. To me, darkness is clear as daylight. Stop it. <laughs> well, what am it. I? We've talked at length about the other Dr. Moreau. Yeah, I'm not even sure. It doesn't Batman feel like forever. So. <laughs> Still one so of the greatest soundtracks. Yeah. That's true. I mean, yeah. that there's, there's a lot to love about Batman forever. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm going to take it back. He's not the greatest Batman, but no, I do not. like him as Batman. He's up there. He's up yeah, there. I like him as Batman. He was pretty I'm good, good Batman. Yeah. Yeah. I dug it. I dug it. He's better than George Clooney. Worst well, Batman? I mean, that's a low bar. He's better than George Clooney. He's better than George Clooney. I think... I mean, you're. But maybe give yeah. George Clooney a better Batman movie because that was a shit movie. Yeah. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Nah. This is bad casting from the start. Well, I'll tell you what, listener. We're going <laughs> to. We very tall, Batman. pointy ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, did. we ended on Batman. Nipples on the bad suit. Nipples on the bad Well, I mean, that came with Val Kilmer. Yep. Yeah, he did. Well, Joel Schumacher. Schumacher. Let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. Schumacher. Yeah, let's blame who we need to blame. Schumacher right, yeah, is Schumacher responsible for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we're going to talk at length about the island of Dr. Moreau. Hopefully we're going to cover all the stuff that we didn't. Short. Yeah, it could be. And you're going to find out if we would recommend that you watch it. All of this coming up after we summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. <laughs> oh, thanks, Igor. Thanks. He's got the gross makeup on today. I don't like it. He's got that, like... But he's dressed... He's got that ice bucket on his head and, like, the white paint on his face and the fucking moo-moo, like Brando. Uh-huh. And that sexy uh, netting wrapped sexy around netting. his head. <laughs> yeah. Sexy, yeah, you mentioned it. I didn't see it later on. Yeah, yeah don't. Was, there was netting. It was in Daniel... Uh, uh, whatever his last name is. Thulis. Yeah, it was... <laughs> David... David, <laughs> yeah. David Thulis? Yeah. Daniel. David? Daniel. David. 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 Pretty David. sure it's David. No, it's David Thulis. Whatever. It was on his bed. Yeah. Well, that's where it belongs. Which is weird because he's wrapped around your head. far from the sexiest man in this movie. But... Yeah. All right, so... But the it's list true. is very short, <laughs> yeah. so... It's true. <laughs> Our first comment comes from TGS12371. Is that TGS12371? Sure. TGS12... Okay. He says... Uh... Oh, God. He says, uh, okay, I no longer hold a candle for for uh, Michaela. It's all about you, Holly, my new queen. Well, you should give some backstory on this. <laughs> Go ahead, Michaela. <laughs> um, there was a previous episode where he wrote fan mail about me, to, but to you. Yeah. <laughs> but delivered it to you. On my Instagram. Yeah. He decided to profess his love for Michaela on my Instagram page. Yep. Well, he says, uh, Holly, actually, it's been a week or so when I heard about Oh, yeah, because I, my... I accused him. I was like, you jumped ship quick. <laughs> Oh, so he says, okay, so he says, uh, it's it's actually been a week or so since I heard about my post on your personal Instagram account regarding my mm-hmm. once undying devotion yeah. toward Michaela during the fear episode. Mm-hmm. I apologize for the confusion. Mm-hmm. Please let Michaela know about the breaking news. Michaela, you've been duly served. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> what are you going to do? So about our oh, episode goodness. tonight. Oh, by the way. You can follow us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. You, you can also to. get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. It's like some of these fine folks, including Sea Huds. What's up, Chuds? Chuds. He writes in about the island of Dr. Moreau and says, yes, I love this pick. And as previously mentioned, Lost Soul, the documentary about the production, ah. is excellent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. B-Movie Poster Vault writes in. 
and says, I keep telling myself I need to see this, but I'm pretty sure the making of is going to be way more entertaining than the actual film. Mm. I'm... Uh, it's a, we'll wait to my it's a review, but valid I might point. agree with you on all points on <laughs> yeah, that. We'll get to that. Bravo, B movie poster vault. I like. Uh, I'm just gonna say I like. Uh, I like the things you post on Twitter as a personal message to B movie Aww, poster vault. Sean's they're posting they're B posting. movie posters. They're, they're, they're awesome. They're posting Sean, some good stuff. Sean, yeah. B, movie, like, po- B Sean. movie poster has a fan girl in Sean. They do. Say, they really Sean's, do. I like some of the stuff you're posting. You do some good stuff. I was gonna say Sean's baiting for the fans. <laughs> totally. He's putting some bait out there. He, Sean wants his own fans. I want people to. I want people to message me on Holly's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> message if you're gonna message going all of us. Just yeah. message yeah. Holly. Holly's just tell account. Holly first. Feel free. I probably check it the most anyway, so it's fine. I there will pass on the messages. E Furulund says, see them both. They're both highly recommended. The movie for all of its glorious schlock and unhinged Brando, and see the documentary because that story is just so two bananas. Mm. They should sell them as a box set. I agree. Oh with that God! Statement. What a great yes. double feature. They're yes. from different uh, companies. Yeah, New Line and Synapse or something. Who put it out there? I Maybe. Remember. I think so. I don't yeah. know. If they can come together for a Halloween box, then they can come together. For That's this is very yeah, true. Very so, true. what's the best order to watch them in? Though, watch I the documentary watch... first. No. I no, would. No, no, no. I would watch it first. I think honestly, because that would get you to watch the movie. I feel. Maybe like. we no, should. Maybe think... we should save that for wrap ups. Yeah. All right. All right. All right Give your right, opinion yeah, for the other for wrap ups. Uh, Jacob Kotner writes in and says this. This is a fascinating movie. Not a good movie, but fascinating nonetheless. Mm. Brando is crazy. Mm. Kilmer is on Valium. Balk is a cat person. <laughs> the making of documentary makes the movie even better. Still crap, though. Well, crap, crap. <laughs> yeah. This is Jacob yeah. Cotner. Yeah. Oh, my God. A plus. Bravo, sir. <laughs> I'm just, Solid. can I wait? Well, Solid. crap, crap. Get, just give me that paper when you're done with it. For wrap I'm going to use that for my wrap-up. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, really all right. That was really that concise was perfect. and beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect synopsis. Some poetry, man. Some oh, haiku yeah, poetry go. there. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Uh, Tay Osterman says, I only watched it because Ron Perlman is in it. Laugh out loud. Valid reason to watch a movie. I, I mean, think. yeah. He's great. I mean, yeah. it's a valid reason to go into watching a movie. Once you come out of the movie, you're just you're like, like, I should watch, barely I should watch that movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Criminal underuse of Ron Perlman, uh, I would probably. say. Yes. yes. Yeah. Anyone could have played that part. Anyone yeah. could have played Anyone. that part. You wouldn't have known Anybody. a difference. Yeah. Nope. Yep. So I guess that uh, brings us to the moment you've all been waiting for. We're going to do wrap-ups. Colin. Yes, it is. Uh, as a person, Uh-oh. not a half-person animal or anything mm. of the sort. That we know For of. all that we know of, yes. <laughs> what did you think about the Island of Dr. Moreau 1996 version? Well, I mean, I think Jacob pretty much summed it up. It mm. is a fascinating movie. Mm. A case study. But I noticed that everybody is basically saying that, you know, now that the Lost Soul documentary is out, it's like you got to watch the pair, uh, you know, to really get the full experience. Um, I don't think you'll be served well by watching the movie itself. Um, I didn't like it when I first saw it. I imagine you won't like it. It's not, I mean, it's batshit crazy only in the way that you can kind of feel. The movie just kind of spinning out of control. It feels like all the characters are spinning out of control, like the production spinning out of control. You have these two egomaniacs just intentionally sabotaging the movie. Granted, they are the most interesting thing about the movie. I mm-hmm. think, like as we were talking about before, I think if you take that those out of it, you wouldn't have any reason to watch this at all. And because they're in it, it's like, well, now I got to see this crazy piece of shit where they just, you know are doing their own thing. It's just, it's not, I don't know. Is it, is the Brando and uh, Kilmer parts worth sitting through this train wreck of a movie about a subject that I absolutely really don't care about. (laughs) I mean, I I, I guess that's it as a movie. It didn't hook me. There's no hook, right? 20 minutes into it. You're like, I'm like, what do I care about? Okay. I don't really know what this movie's about. Yeah. It's, because, well, at the end, yeah. did we mention where it gets all preachy on us? And I think oh, it's yeah. trying to underscore <laughs> a theme because all of a sudden, as David Fethulis is rowing away from the island, then we get real world, uh, like B roll footage or CNN footage of uh, people just being shitty to each other. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. goes on these pontificating about how, like, every day I'm haunted by what I saw in Rose Island by watching it's, the news where I see this kind of the animal in man. I'm like, the use of voiceover yeah. is spotty at best. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's it feels terrible. Like if they wanted it to be impactful, they should have used it throughout the movie instead of, they used it at the beginning, right? 
Yeah, they use it at the beginning and the end, and and slightly the end, and once in the middle, maybe. And I, I, I haven't read the the original novel, but I'm assuming that is a general theme in the original novel, I, yeah. and they're trying to bring that in, but it just doesn't. It's like work. Animal Farm or something. Exactly, it's an yeah. allegory yeah. for something, and, and that's he, why they use those Shakespeare's like the. the the fucking Shakespeare monologue, like we are men or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it all comes together in the novel, but I don't think it's at all relevant in this movie. Yeah. You have to see our inherent, like these are the mm-hmm. outsiders and they're asking, you know, for their inherent humanity to be recognized. But at the same time within their tribe, there is the bestial version, right. you know, or whatever animalistic, you know, the core human, I guess that just destroys everything. And ultimately which one wins? The you know that one's the more powerful thing, right? There's, that's what your movie's about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, does this movie pull it off and make that interesting in any kind of way? Well, I guess we just said that it did because you know it's interesting to watch uh, Kilmer and uh, and Brando. I'm sorry, I'm talking too long. I don't know if I'd recommend this or not. It's hard. I guess that's I know. why it's hard. I'm like hard. circling the drain, going <laughs> yeah. like, when I tell you, you have to see it, listener. I think it is kind of in put some that caveat ways, on there, Colin. Put a caveat on it. Go for it. Well, I can't help but do it. You have Look, to. Put a bird. <laughs> put a bird on it. <laughs> God damn it. I really am torn. Because it's not a good movie. How do you feel? How do you feel, Colin? <clears throat> How do you feel? Your average person at you work. You want to watch this again? Would you tell them to watch you it? You want to see this movie again? No, I don't want to yeah. see this. There you movie. go. Yeah. It's not a good <laughs> That's movie. it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see this good. movie again? There it is. It's not good. You're watching an egomaniac. So I guess I just I don't like them because of what they did in the movie. As you know, it's like... You guys fucked up somebody else's movie, mm-hmm. um, and so well, I don't yeah, like you, them. Could, could you could you imagine being Richard Stanley and like having right. these egos derail yeah, your movie? How much I would could. that hurt? Yeah. You know, that man, that yeah. poor goddamn man. And then it sabotages the audience experience and everything just for their own amusement. Mm-hmm. And ironically, that's the only reason to watch it is because they're doing something for their own amusement. Right. I think you should watch uh, for this lesson in uh, you know cinematic hubris. And the destruction of a man's soul. Watch <laughs> Lost Soul. Yeah, uh, maybe right. you should just watch that. And not watch. You don't need to watch yeah. the actual movie. Although no, you want maybe to. just yeah. if you watch the movie, just watch David Thewlis, uh take the the director, take his soul into him, and just realize that's a good that, way. Yeah, and carry yeah. that burden. And carry yeah. that burden throughout the movie. Yeah. That's a good no, way to watch this movie. It's just like David Thewlis that. is the director of this mm-hmm. movie. I yeah. love that. And yeah. just watch how he reacts. Except I think uh, Frankenheimer was a tyrant on the set. He Probably. Was. He so, was but, it he, sounds he, like it. He was a dick. Thewlis is sucking in the soul of uh, Richard it's Stanley. Stanley. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. By was minute. some of it warranted uh, because everyone was out of control? Maybe. But it sounds like he was just pure evil. Oh my god. It's like having a substitute teacher in a middle school class. How the fuck are you going to get these kids to listen? to you, you know, yeah. like it's out of control. You know? so you gotta come you gotta in kill a kid yeah, yeah. Exactly. before they start yeah. listening yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so no, Michaela, please take it away. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> we should mention that this movie officially puts Feruza Balk on our wall of fame. She's had three freak show yes. movies at this point. So oh yeah, we got yeah, that, Oz, that, The Craft, and this movie. And this movie, yeah. And this and The Craft go. came out in the same year. So really? yeah, yeah. Yes, which one did. came out first? I'm going with this one. I think. I think the. I think this one because I feel okay. like the craft sure. was like a fall release. I mean, maybe Could it would be. make more sense. Um, it feels, but like I don't it. know for sure. I don't know for sure. But, but that poor sweet girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> dealt with a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. So much. <laughs> she seems less crazy in this one than she, she does she, in she, the this craft. This is a subdued yeah. performance. She doesn't mm-hmm. even her features don't seem as uh, no. you know severe. extended as severe yeah. as in yeah. this movie. She's like, oh, I, I don't want to say moral compass, but almost the moral compass. Like she's pretty, as close as we get to a moral compass, right? Mm-hmm. Like in this movie. She's the innocent. The innocent. She's, yeah. she's yeah. the yeah. least craziest person in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And for yeah. that reason, he has to get her off the island. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of bummed to not see her in full-on Catwoman makeup. I don't know about you guys. Which was like, the original plan. Yeah. That's what Richard Stanley wanted to do. I, I was hoping with it. like the hood over her head that like mm-hmm. cat, she pulled down cat there. ears. I'd rather be something and, like, cat around, ears. Like, oh. oh, he wanted her in full body prosthetics and it oh, just damn. didn't happen. Especially because like in that first scene she has the hood over her head and like the scarf over her hands. So I was like, oh, she's got paws and cat ears. Yeah. Like the full nope. deterioration yep. of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been great. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I agree. His his version may have been a, a interesting watch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyway, sorry. Well. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we wouldn't have it, a documentary. As great as I think the prosthetics are in this movie, and as much as I love that Ron Perlman and Feruza Balk, two of my favorite actors, are like really committing and giving their all to this movie that does not deserve them. Um, I like 
the ego clash that is happening between Val Kilmer and Marlon Brando, which really comes to a head when when Val Kilmer does that horrible Brando impression later on in the movie, where he's clearly just throwing him under the bus, being like, I met my hero and he shat all over me and this is my response to it. Um, I cannot recommend this movie. Like, it's... I, I'm sure we're making it sound more interesting than it actually is, <laughs> but it's really not. Trust me, it is not as good as we're making it sound. I, just watch the documentary if you're curious. That's all you need. I feel like you watch the documentary, you get everything you would want out of the movie. The movie's just like too convoluted. The plot's not very straightforward, and the beasts are not sympathetic, even though they're well made. And it's just. You question a lot of the decisions people are making, and like when you start questioning that, it takes you out of the movie and it, you know, devalues the experience. So I do not recommend this movie, Sean. Uh, if we're making this movie sound more interesting than it is, I'm here to put those fears to rest. Uh, I don't like this movie. I don't think you should watch this movie. I don't think it's interesting. Um, there's, this was your first time. Also, this is my first yeah. time watching this. We've one. all I, seen it before. Sean has not. I've yeah. not seen this before. I don't ever want to watch it again. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't like the the prosthetics in the movie. I appreciate the effort that was put in to do them. I I, I don't. I don't like them. It's like I said. It's too. It feels all too cartoonish to me. I don't. It feels very of the '90s. I don't like them. I wouldn't want to watch them ever again. Oh, God. Uh, I'll never want to see this movie again. Um, would this, you watch the documentary about I would watch it? the shit out of the documentary. Yeah. And I yeah. think, but it's hard. And here's the problem that you encounter is just what do you watch first? I think you have to, unfortunately, I think you have to watch the movie before you watch the documentary. Personally, I think that's where you have to go. Get through the movie, sure, and then watch the documentary, which I want to watch now yeah. to see what the fuck mm -hmm. with all this. But uh, I don't. I really don't like this movie. I, ooh, <laughs> I uh, no. I will. I'll never watch it again. I don't. I, I'm as much as I saying that you should watch the movie before you watch the documentary. You shouldn't watch this movie. It's fucking. <laughs> it's fucking, it's fucking it's, that's really fucking hard. Like maybe you know what? Go and just watch the documentary and tell me what your experience was because yeah. I want to know. But it's a good documentary. It's very it's, thorough. Uh, yeah, it's we'll very watch thorough. The trailer after. We're yeah. Done. yeah. Yeah. No, I want to watch the documentary. But uh, if I if oof, don't watch this movie. If I, uh, no, <laughs> there's not. There's there's craziness all over the place, and it is. While it is interesting to just see. Um, Marlon Brando do things and say things because mm -hmm. I find that interesting. It's not worth sitting through this whole ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. Ninety minute movie. <laughs> yeah. To, to yeah. it felt that. a lot longer. It felt so much longer. Yeah. So no, I do. I do not recommend <laughs> the Island of Doctor Moreau, nineteen ninety six. Avoid this movie. <laughs> Just watch the documentary. No, Holly. Um. Yeah. No. This movie is just. Oh. God, it's so atrocious. It's it's a mess. Um, this movie sucks. I hate it so much. And you own I it. I brought it. I own it. <laughs> I own it. this movie. I own it. Thank you for not having any other outlet for us to watch this tonight, Amazon. <laughs> I bought it, motherfuckers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and agree with with what everyone is saying. I feel like this movie is like somewhat breaking us tonight because we're all just so torn on it. Um. No, I I personally think that the best way to go into this, if you're if you want to watch this movie, if you're just that curious, I think you should watch the documentary first and then watch the movie because I think once you've watched the documentary, you will have an appreciation for what you're watching. Not necessarily meaning you'll like it. I think you're still gonna fucking hate it, but I think you will more appreciate what you're watching because you have that backstory and you know these moments what actually happened in the in the behind the scenes. Um, I think that's the best way to take it in. I think you won't be so like offended by watching it. If you watch it just by itself, I think you're going to hate it and you're going to be just so disappointed. You're just going to be bored. I think you're going to just be angry, actually. <laughs> but if you watch the documentary first, I think you will appreciate that that understanding of what was happening and you'll you'll have those those moments in the back of your mind while you're watching it and I don't think you'll mind what's happening as much um so yeah if you're going to watch it I say watch it as a package deal 
Um, I would recommend the documentary to everyone. Just if you want to just watch that, that'd be perfectly fine. But do not watch this movie by itself. You have to watch it in accompaniment with the documentary. And I, I suggest watching the doc first. Um, but yeah, as a standalone movie, no, fuck this movie. <laughs> fuck it. Universal <laughs> not recommend. Yeah. All right. Yeah, fuck this movie. Documentary, yes. Package deal, sure, go ahead. By itself, absolutely not. That's it. All right, so that's uh, I guess the definitive word on the <laughs> island of Doctor so. I think it all uh, starts and ends here. I'm actually surprised. I kind of figured that maybe there might be some like yeah, is it, you know, it's a crazy fucking no. okay, but no, no, nope. it's no. an experience. It's not entertaining. It's an experience. Yeah, it, it's not. It doesn't you cross can have in, an experience and not be happy by it. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. It, it never crosses into awesomely bad. No, it gets no. close. It gets real close, especially with the Val Kilmer stuff when he's losing his goddamn mind to that Nine Inch Nails song. Smoking joints yeah. in the elevator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nine Inch Nails. Like, yeah, but it's yeah. not like, like Wicker Man. No, awesome. no, no, yeah. no. Yeah. It doesn't need, like it. It get, it starts to go in that direction and then just doubles back. You know, yeah. it just. Yeah, there are moments that you're like, okay, this could go, and then it just, no. Mm-hmm. It disappoints. All right. So it's like Lost Soul and Jodorowsky's Dune, double feature. Yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Great <laughs> film. And Hearts of Darkness. Actually, that's probably better. Uh, Lost Soul. Probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so that's uh, The Island of Dr. Moreau, 1996, on the Saturday Night Free Show. That means next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Michaela. What are we watching next week? All right, so time <laughs> is power. Oh, we are no. going to watch in time. What did, the wait, Justin what did, Timberlake the movie? The 2011 oh! Justin Timberlake movie. Oh, my God. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. Oh I'm excited. I haven't seen this movie, and I've always wanted to watch it. <laughs> it is I'm a, excited. It is it's a got per- Vincent Carthizer in it, too. It, it is a perfect. And, yes, it does. Uh, what's her name? Olivia. Olivia Munn? No. Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Amanda. Fuck. Amanda Seyfried. Killian Murphy's in it as well. I'm excited to watch this movie. It is. I've always wanted to see this. And it's shot by Roger Deakins. Ooh, I'm all for it. It is, it, on. it is a classic example of beautiful idea, horrible execution. Ooh, I'm all for it. So, <laughs> yes. in time. In time. In time. All right. So, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope that you'll join us. And until Please. then, ladies and germs, the basement.